Welcome to a lesson on linear growth. In this lesson, we'll express linear growth in recursive form as well as explicit form. Populations of people, animals, and items are growing all around us. By understanding how things grow, we can better understand what to expect in the future. In this unit, we will focus on time-dependent change. As an example, let's say there are 3,500 students attending a local community college and the number of students is increasing by 125 each year. How many students will attend the college in four years, and when will the number of students reach 5,600? Suppose that P sub n represents the number of students attending the college after n years. Then P sub zero would represent the number of students now at time zero. P sub one would represent the number of students after one year and p sub two would represent the number of students after two years, and so on. So we can say that p sub zero, the initial population or number of students, is equal to 3,500, and therefore p sub n is equal to p sub n minus one plus 125. This tells us to find the number of students after a particular year. We take the number of students or the population of the year before and add 125. So p sub n minus one is the number of students one year before p sub n. This is called a recursive relationship. A recursive relationship is a formula which relates the next value in a sequence to the previous value or values. Here, the number of students in year n here can be found by adding 125 to the number of students in the previous year p sub n minus one. Again, year n minus one is one year before year n. So if we want to find the population after several years, using this recursive formula, it would look like what we see here. P sub one is equal to P sub zero plus 125. P sub two is equal to P sub one plus 125. P sub three is equal to P sub two plus 125. So we again, notice how for any particular value of n, P sub n minus one is one less than n. So P sub one is equal to 3,500 plus 125, or 3,625, and we use this value to find P sub two. P sub two is equal to 3,625 plus 125, giving us 3,750, and so on. Notice after four years, we're able to find the number of students would be 4,000. Recursive relationships are excellent for describing simply and cleanly how a quantity is changing. However, they are not convenient for making predictions or solving problems that stretch far into the future. For that, a closed or explicit form for the relationship is preferred. An explicit equation allows us to calculate p sub n for a specific time or specific value of n without needing to know p sub n, the previous term or previous value. You may be able to guess the explicit equation, but let's derive it from the recursive formula. We know that p sub one is equal to p sub zero plus 125. Notice how we're adding one 125 to p sub zero. P sub two is equal to P sub one plus 125. But notice how here we'll leave P sub one as a sum. Again, this is P sub one. Notice how here we're actually adding two 125s to find P sub two, which we can express as 3,500 plus two times 125. Then P sub three is equal to P sub two plus 125. But if we express P sub two as this sum here, which is also expressed here, notice how we're really adding three 125s as we see here. And then finally, P sub four is equal to P sub three plus 125. But if we leave P sub three as this sum here, notice how to find P sub four, we're actually adding four 125s to the initial value of 3,500. 
So in general we can say that P sub N is equal to 3,500 plus N times 125, where we can write this product here as just 125N. So our explicit equation would be P sub N equals 3,500 plus 125 times N. Notice how this formula allows us to find the student population or the number of students for any particular value of N without knowing the previous year's population or number of students. Using the explicit equation, we can determine when the number of students will reach 5,600. We would substitute 5,600 for P sub N and then solve for N. So we would have the equation 5,600 equals 3,500 plus 125N. And now to solve for N, we would subtract 3,500 from both sides. So we'd have 2,100 equals 125N. And now we divide both sides by 125. And 2,100 divided by 125 is equal to 16.8. And remember, we're looking at the population change per year. So notice after 16 years, that would not be long enough to reach 5,600 students. So it would be the next year, or after 17 years, when the student population would reach 5,600. After 17 years, the population would actually exceed 5,600, but it would take 17 years to reach that value. Notice with the explicit equation, it would also take less work to determine how many students attend the college after four years, which we found previously using the recursive formula. To find P sub four, or the number of students after four years, using the explicit equation, we would just substitute four for N, which would give us 3,500 plus 125 times four, which would be 3,500 plus 500, which is 4,000. Which again is the same value that we found using the recursive formula earlier. In our example, the number of students grew by the same amount each year. This constant change is the defining characteristic of linear or arithmetic growth. Plotting the values that we calculated for the student population, we can see the values form a straight line, the shape of linear growth, which again as we see here. So the particular number of students for each year are the blue points, which as we can see from the red graph, would form a line passing through all points. So if a quantity starts at size P sub zero and grows by D every time period, then the quantity after n time periods can be determined using either of these relations. The recursive formula would be P sub n equals P sub n minus one plus d, and the explicit form of linear growth would be P sub n equals P sub zero plus d times n. In this equation, d represents the common difference, the amount the population changes each time n increases by one, if you recall the slope-intercept form of a linear equation expressed here, the explicit equation above is the same equation, just using a slightly different form. So let's go ahead and compare the two forms. The common difference d here is the slope in the equation y equals mx plus b. In both cases, we're measuring the constant rate of change. The initial amount, p sub zero, is the y-intercept b. In both cases, this would be the output or the function value when the input is zero. And then finally, p sub n after n units of time here is the same as the y value in y equals mx plus b. So even though these equations look quite different, they are equivalent. Let's take a look at one more example. A city currently has 128 streetlights. As part of an urban renewal program, the city council has decided to install three additional streetlights at the end of each week for the next 52 weeks. Write the recursive and explicit formulas to represent this linear growth. So for the recursive formula, 
P sub n, the number of street lights after n weeks, would be equal to P sub n minus one, the number of street lights after the previous week, plus the common difference, and because they're adding three additional street lights at the end of each week, D would be three. And now for the explicit equation, P sub n is equal to P sub zero, the starting amount, which is 128, plus the common difference D times n. Again, D, the common difference is three, because they're installing three additional street lights per week, so we'd have 128 plus three n. So to answer the question, how many street lights will the city have at the end of 42 weeks? It would take a lot of work to answer this question using the recursive formula, but using the explicit formula, we can simply substitute 42 for n. So P sub 42, the number of street lights after 42 weeks, is equal to 128 plus three times 42, which is 128 plus 126, which is 254. So at the end of 42 weeks, there are 254 street lights. I hope you found this helpful.